reporting. The meeting will come to order for Thursday, July 21st of the Community Preservation Act Committee. With the, uh, we have a full membership tonight. Would the clerk please make note of that? I'd like a motion to approve the minutes, noting that Scott and Greg, you weren't here. You'll probably have to abstain. I was here. I was not here. I will abstain. Scott was here and has a minus next to his name. Uh, oh, wait a no, minute. Like no. Is this May 19th? I wasn't at the meeting before. This is June 16th. The June 16th meeting. I have the wrong minutes up. Okay. Greg was the, Greg and Ryan were here. Okay. Motion to approve. I did get a comment by email um, that there were a couple corrections on the housing partnership. Um, the amount in the um, deferred payment loan was listed as incorrectly listed at five thousand. It should have been seventy five hundred. Um, Is that in the minutes right now, or did you already correct it? It's not corrected in the in the copies that you guys have. Okay. Um, and then the other correction was that the the Kathy worked at the Greenfield Housing Authority and not the CDC. Greenfield Housing Authority. So, so you'll make those. Mm -hmm. So those are amended. Any okay with that? I move we accept the minutes as noted. I'll second. Okay. All in favor of moving that the minutes be approved as amended. Aye. Aye. Abstention. Abstain. Greg is abstaining. Okay, and you'll send out the final. We do have the final of the uh, 19th minutes, okay? On our agenda public comment, now we have a number of people here to speak to their applications, but is there anyone here from the public who wants to address the committee other than for the applications in front of us? No? Okay. Count balances, open projects, correspondence, and other related administrative items. I'll make a note that the C annual CPA meeting and preservation plan, which we should have studied, is going to meet upstairs and that if anyone like the members of all of your, or that who you represent should be notified that it's there, upstairs, in case we have a large group. Can we sit at the, like the council? So we have the past. Yeah. Sit at the, all right. So we'll be up there next meeting. And in the minutes, we have the current funding balances. Anybody have a question for that? Um, the new fiscal year 17 uh, budget, mm -hmm. it adds um, 70,000 to each of the reserved open spaces for preservation right, they're in there housing. Mm -hmm. And um, 251,700 to the reserve fund. <coughs> That's not shown in this particular minute, right? Or is it? No, because that was the change. That was the change. Right, so, so right, in addition to this, we have 70,000 addition to each area plus 251. Can you give the totals for each area, Jim? So the total is 70,000 reserved for open space, 130,000 for historic preservation, 223,812 for affordable housing, mm -hmm. 900,000. About 901,000 in the undesignated fund and 251,700 in reserve for a total of 1.5 million. Okay. Well, we could probably afford to spend some of that. Um, any comments on that from the correspondence? Do we have any, Jane? Or open projects. We're all set on open projects. They're continuing. No, there are no deadlines coming up. No, but a number of projects did close out at the end of the fiscal year. Okay. Um, so. well, well, we can find those out at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at, um, I, mean, I just removed them. Are they in the computer right here? Yeah, the, um, okay. 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 Manhattan Rail Trail. Improvements. Improvements was closed out. Okay, Manhattan Rail Trail is closed out. <coughs> um, that's it for it now. That project isn't done though, is it just? For the, the Manhattan Rail Trail improvements? Um, we're on punch list items right now. It's essentially closed out. It's closed out for CPA. All right. That's good news. Anything else? Nothing else closed out? 
Um, correspondence? Any related administrative items? Okay. Our next meeting, again, is upstairs. Preservation plan, we have that as you submitted it, right? Mm -hmm. Any comments? Anybody have any comments on the preservation plan? So when I note on this plan I have here, you have things crossed out, like Center of is crossed out, Maple School is crossed out. Mm -hmm. so, we can start. so when we get this at the next meeting, it'll be the final plan. What, what, I'm, planning, what, what I'm planning to do is um, take whatever comments from the committee tonight um, next week, I will incorporate them and make a clean version of the draft mm -hmm. to go up on the city website, and I'll <coughs> send that out to everyone. Um, so that will be what people can comment on for the CPA meeting, on the annual meeting on the 18th. Do we vote on this at the next meeting, or do we vote on it in September? Um, we get comments from we the public. Yeah, we'll get comments from the public. And we might amend it after the break. Right. 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 So we vote on it in September. I have nothing to add. I think it's well done. It's obvious that the Jamie's done the edits as necessary. Anything from the committee on the preservation plan? So, do you have to print this or do you just send it to everybody? The one that you're, we, when we do this upstairs, is it printed and handed out? I know that it's a few pages long, um, 28 pages. I would just do the same thing that I regularly do, like email to PDF and people will well, how about, about the public upstairs? They're the ones commenting on it. Um, you said it's, on, it's on the website, so we won't be making printouts of it. Okay. Maybe make a couple, just in case. All right, applications. I'm going to do the Housing Authority, well, the Fair Housing <laughs> Partnership and the Housing Authority, because they're both dealing with housing, and then we'll go to the Respondent Trust. I hope you guys will be patient for that, not the trust. First one is the East Hampton Photo Housing First Time Home Buyer Housing Wrap. Last time we left it, we were going to get a new budget, and I think we have, correct? Um, okay, so that's the accessibility budget, excuse me. Rehab program. What's changed? The administration lines? What's changed is um, that I added details um, after a conversation with PDPC um, with regards to housing we have about what, what's included under the admin over an overhead line item. And the same thing with the first time home buyer program. Got more details. Um, as you know, we, are, we were working off um, the budget that had been prepared by Valley CDC a year, a year and a half ago. So again, we got more details from them just to clarify what that um, is used for, would be used for. Okay. Jess, would you mind closing that door, please? Mayor is loud. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other thing under the 10% contingency line item at the end, bottom. Um, we had a couple of different conversations about clarifying that, in, which included uh, speaking also with Jamie. And it, it's it's exactly what it says. It, it's a contingency to address costs that um, don't fit under the programs themselves. But for example, advertising the RFP, that would not be something that the vendor would Something that would have to be done outside of their. And there's a cost to us to do that? Uh, it depends on where it's advertised. I guess, okay. Um, I'm just. Then, excuse me, go ahead. Go, no, go ahead, finish. Um, and then administering contracts, the, the contracts for the two programs, because my assumption that there'd be a contract between the vendor and the city to run these programs. So that would have to be managed in terms of... Um, and that's not something you can predict, so you want it in a contingent. <laughs> right. right. Um, and that's part of that 10% that we're saying? Yes. And, and the other 
thing that came clear as we were discussing this was that it's it, we're not going to draw down all that money and spend it just because we have it. It's whatever doesn't get spent, we'll go back. Is this a reimbursement program? Uh, or not? Yeah. Well, it, it's a in other words, administrative costs, for instance. If they incur an administrative cost, they submit, they pay it and submit it. I don't know how that works, but. Right. Otherwise, it stays in the cities. Right. So in other words, you can't spend the money without the finance director knowing about it and it has to fit within the parameters of what we're doing. So that makes me feel good that it's safe. It's, there's a check and balance there. Yes. Can't just spend it because, oh, we have some money. We need some new tools. That's what I do for this. So that, that um, wasn't clear, clear last time, so that's, um, I'm that's just, our response to your question about that. I'm just curious, because you said at the beginning it was based on, what did you say the budget was based on for the home buyers program, for instance? <clears throat> Is it based on someone else's budget? I forget what you I said. I believe it was about two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. Um, it's based on the budget. Because your administrative budget is specific to the dollar which suggests that you had an example I of did. spending that was $8,949. Right. And I, I would, you know, it'd be all right with me if you just said $9,000 and I would feel. Okay, well, but in other words, in other words, when you put that kind of specificity in there, it almost asks you to put a detail of where that is, like, you know, $1,000 here, $10,000, $4,000 there. And I think that was the question, it raises the questions that the committee had. I'm not speaking for the whole committee, but those administrative costs were where we stumbled last time. Right. I mean, I don't have, I, I believe they exist and I believe you've explained them. And I also feel comfortable that you can't spend the money without approval anyway. <clears throat> but I'm just saying, when you get that specific in a dollar amount, it asks for where those expenses might be coming from. Well, to respond to that, uh, about a year ago, I believe Valley CDC came here requesting money for this program okay and at that time it was determined that they were could not apply um so then the idea came up of having the housing authority apply i'm sorry housing partnership. the housing partnership don't worry i get screwed up too apply, <laughs> um, make a request for both of these programs well we've no, never run first time home buyer program so we asked them we could take a look at their budget that they had submitted and maybe do some updating of that. And so that's what these numbers are based on. Well, the total request is an even dollar amount, so, okay. Because you, you have a dollar in the counseling there. <laughs> that's how it adds up, okay. Comments from the committee or questions? Apologize, you've already been over this, but uh, for the benefit of those of us that were not here at the last meeting, could you mm -hmm. explain what uh, was involved in the rehab program? Um, so the housing re rehab program we currently run through our community development block grant. Um, the way that the community development block grant is run is that we have a very specific target area that we can only spend the money in and it's, it's really where we have the concentrated population of low mod income individuals. The money that the partnership is requesting is for housing rehab pro projects outside that target area. We still have need if just because they don't fall within this boundary that we've set to spend CDPG dollars doesn't mean that there aren't people who still need housing we have. So about, I guess, maybe four years ago, um, money was requested for housing rehab for CPA dollars to do the same exact thing. So this is actually the second time that the committee would be funding this program. It was extremely successful. The last time we actually raised to four units. Um, I would add that that contingency money could potentially be used to add another unit if, if the three units end up being um, smaller half rehab programs and we could pull that money in. But what we're looking to do is get buildings up to code. So we're not putting on additions, we're not adding anything flashy. It's really, you know, windows and roof and siding, um, bathrooms, heating, stuff that, that to bring a, um, a house back up to code. And the properties are owned by whom? By the individuals themselves. So it's a, how do you connect with those individuals? We have a waiting list. So we have, right now through CDG, we advertise. We have a wait list of about 50 people who are within the target area. And we, I have to check the numbers for outside the target area, but I want to say we have at least 15. Um, we probably people find out about it from how? They come through the housing 
partnership? Or? They, they come to, to my department needing help, seeking assistance, and we put them in contact with PBPC who manages our program. They get um, like a preliminary income qualification process to see if they even be eligible. And if so, then they're put on the wait list. And then when money is made available, a mail, PBPC sends out a whole mailing to everybody that they have on the wait list and it's kind of a first come, first serve. So whoever gets their paperwork in the fastest is going to get themselves up to the list. And this was run before as a CPA As funded. a CPA project, yeah. So obviously then it passed muster with uh, whoever the powers would be about being <coughs> oh, CPA approved. Absolutely. It's, it's affordable and housing, in other words. Right? It's, it's <laughs> housing that's in need of rehab. So it's, um, yes. Based on, based on an income threshold. Based on an income threshold. Right. You have to be a low mod income to be able to qualify for the program. And just to catch the other members up, this is run by an outside organization, right? Correct. So Not by the housing partnership. Right. Pioneer Valley Planning Commission is one of the only entities in the region that actually runs a housing rehab program. It's very complicated. There's a lot of details. It's, it takes a lot of personnel power to actually run a program. You have to have a housing specialist go out and do inspections for each house, make a determination of what needs to be done. Um, they come up with a budget, then they send it out to bid for contractors that are on approved list. Those contractors, then whoever is the lowest bid, the homeowner gets to pick the um, select the contractor. Um, if they want to pay a little, if they want to pay their own money to hire somebody that they know that might be a higher bid, they can do that. And then the contract is between the contractor and the homeowner. It's not between the city. So we're, we're funneling the money, and then the contract is between the homeowner and the contractor. And PDPC oversees that entire process, um, and the housing specialist will follow up with the contractor and, and make sure that the contractor is doing what they're supposed to do on, a, on the right. So the PB, they have a project manager to watch. They're a project manager. So they have financial people, a housing specialist, and project managers, and income qualification um, people. And that's all they do is, is, is do income qualifications for the individual. Is that where the cost control comes in for the contractors? Is the, the people who are, you know, the housing manager and so forth from? Well, they're publicly bid, so they have to take the lowest. Yeah. So it's my understanding that um, CPA funds can be used for rehab of affordable housing properties only if the properties were originally uh, acquired or created with the CPA funds. I think it's if they're income eligible. I don't think the original. <laughs> the um, guidance of the CPA website um, bears that out. Yeah, the, the, you can use CPA funds to rehab uh, affordable housing property only if the property was acquired or created with CPA funds. <clears throat> so in this case, when you've got a, just a you know a private homeowner, that sounds big. It would not yeah. be seen. I mean, I'll, I can pass this around. If you know that. This is printed out from the. Community Preservation Coalition website to look at the sort of matrix of allowable uses there. Um, um, you want to answer that? We, we have run it in the past, um, and the coalition provides guidance. They don't provide, they're not a regulatory authority. Right, so not, they, not an authoritative. Um, body and the, this, but. the uh, CPA legislation. Uh, allows for support of affordable housing mm -hmm. as one of and support is defined as these types of activities so mm -hmm. so I this is an interpretation by the community preservation coalition not necessarily legislative law sure that's what I think I'm hearing that's a, yeah that's what I'm hearing from Jamie for what it's worth the um, mass department of revenue has the same But we've done it before, and we didn't get our hands slapped, right? <laughs> I'm, he's bringing up a question, and, 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 and I, I don't pretend to be No, but I want to. But you know any more than you guys do. But I'm just bringing up a concern. That would be extremely difficult to fund affordable housing. You'd be, it would be difficult to spend that money if that's the only way that you could spend it. I mean, the CPA regulations have changed that you can do support services, so we can the first time home buyer program. The legislation recently changed so that could happen because if you could, if you hold it to so the only way that you can spend it is for other projects that were purchased with CPA, you'd be sitting on that money forever, and you wouldn't be doing what you need to be doing in the community. My that, that right? may be true in this, you know, but we're also in some ways bound by 
how we were formed as a, as a committee to allocate funds. And if we're restricted in how we can allocate those funds, I think it's worth knowing that and <coughs> <having> <coughs> I think you should consider the interpretation and, and what support means. Mm. Well, my, these, are, I, these are low mod income individuals. I would, I mean, I would have to the city otherwise. You know, I mean, that's really what we're getting at. We're at, we're at a point of gentrification in the city, and, and the city is flipping. I'm not. I don't think they're debating whether or not it's necessary or needed. I think they're debating whether or not it's legal. And I have to go on the side of this being an interpretation of the law rather than the law. Now, the DOR audits us quite a lot. If there was an issue, we would have heard about it. So I find it odd that if they have that on their website, that they would not come back to us the last time we did this. And I'm assuming that's the loan pro rehab program, because the homeowner buyer program you said was recently, I think I recall that, was recently enacted. So that's not a problem. Um, personally, I would, what am I reading? Who is this from? This is the state legislation. State legislation, Jamie just gave me, the supportive community housing shall include, but not be limited to, programs that provide grants, loans, rental assistance, security deposits, interest rate, write downs, or other forms of assistance directly to individuals and families who are eligible for community housing or to an entity that owns, operates, or manages such housing for the purpose of making housing affordable. That's the law. This is the legislation. So I guess there's interpretations all over the place. I don't know what to say. That makes me feel more comfortable, Harry. <coughs> Why don't we just get the town solicitor to make a comment on it? What? Get the town solicitor to make a comment on it. That's what he's there for, right? Yeah, but it costs money when we ask them. Does the committee really want to do that? Um, that's pretty, so th you guys should read this. That's pretty clear. Let, I think, you want to show that to Ryan? Mm -hmm. Is he yeah, up? I mean, I, I don't think any of us are purposefully, you know, wanting to stand in the way of this project on account of that, and that sounds well within. That, that's the, the legislation. The that's not that, an interpret. So. That's the actual legislation. So it seems clear to me that we can do this. So you're thinking this, this falls under the other forms of assistance? It's a loan. Rehab program, um, it's, yes, other forms of assistance. I'm mm -hmm. sorry, the loan or something else. That's well, it is a loan. It's a deferred payment loan. That's how the program works. OK, so. The first my, home buyer or the housing rehab? The housing rehab. So I have to admit, I rely on Jamie and Jess to let us know that these things are the within the legal program. limits of the legislation. <laughs> They interpret the legislation, and I have to say that I also agree with the notion that if we interpret it too strictly, we won't be helping where we could at all. And I don't know how, I don't think it's too strict to say that we can support. I mean, I think that's, in other words, I think that the interpretation that that allows us to do this is right there for me, anyway. It seems odd as well that it would be that interpretation would suggest then that those that have would be the ones that are eligible to continue to have. It seems biased and would So you don't grow the program right. to other people. Yeah, that seems odd. For repairs and, and rehabilitation, it doesn't mean you can't add affordable housing, but I think the question is rehabilitation. Right? Yeah, and maybe that's direct rehabilitation, you know, um, as opposed to you know giving a loan for rehabilitation, which would be separate things. I'm satisfied after reading that. Me too. How do you feel about it, Ryan? I've still got my doubts, but you know, I think there's probably enough here to carry it anyway. So, Harry, mm -hmm. did you read that? I think it's pretty clear. <coughs> um, is there something that you'd like to double check into? Well, I, I mean, I, I don't think that. Um, I still don't think that direct rehab is authorized. You know, for example, if you were just to say, here's 100,000 bucks, give it to a homeowner and say, you know, just because you're low income, you know, put a new roof on your house. I, I would say that, you know, under the interpretation by the DOR and the Community Preservation Coalition, that would be prohibited. I think the question here is whether giving a homeowner a loan to do rehab is different in some way from just funding the rehab directly. 
I'm not saying it, in my opinion it's definitely prohibited, but I, I think there's a question there. And um, you know, I have to say the precedence carries a lot of weight. That legislation was in existence when the CPA funded this the last time, was it not? So therefore, in my view, it must have passed muster based on that legislation. That I would support it based on that. As assuming DOR looks at all these projects with sufficient detail that they know, you know, everything we do. I'm sure there's, you know, it, it, I don't think you can assume that the DOR is auditing every project done by every municipality that has CPA statewide to determine what exactly. I feel funded. comfortable that we as a community can audit our own work and based on the legislation in front of us, we can make the interpretation. If someone comes back to us and says, oh, you're wrong, mm -hmm. we live and learn. But we're trying to help the community, we're trying to help a needed area so it's not like we're spending money frivolously here. Oh, oh, I totally agree. And, so, and, 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 in other and, words, the concerns that I'm bringing up are not to, uh, you know, knock the merits of the project. I think it's worth a discussion, and I'm glad we were able to look that up in the legislation because that helps me. But I think we are our own. We're here to make these decisions, and yes, there might be questions by members of the committee, but also by others. But given the precedence of this being happened before comfortable with it because of that and that legislation. That's just my opinion. I, well, I, I have another agree that. Yeah, I happen to think that language is pretty broad and well that's and in inclusive of this project at this you know at this point. So especially given the precedent. I don't know. I'm ready to move on. Uh, I'm okay with her explanation of the administrative costs. Anybody else have any issues? Because that was an issue last time. I think Again, we have the check and balance that they can't spend the money without our approval anyway, or with the town watching over it. So, anybody else have questions on that? Well, in that same <coughs> line, I guess the advertising I had a question on. Um, I know that in the, I, I put in there on the paperwork from last okay, meeting, I know the last, it kind of, there was a, there Yes. Okay. <laughs> Um, there is detail in kind of how what that advertising would look like, and I was wondering if you could just review that again, like as far as. And I'm actually more concerned with the first-time home buyer program, the advertising for that. The, my understanding of the advertising for that is um, includes advertising for the education portion, the first-time home buyer workshops that are conducted. I think it's once a month. to advertise for public bidding though? Yes, yeah, so the, the so that costs money. The contingency cost includes the advertising that the, the fees that the city would incur. The way we did it last time was that the housing partnership members basically wrote the RFP, was reviewed by the planning department, signed off by the mayor, but the planning department incurred all the other costs associated with advertising, accepting the bids, you know, answering questions, um, that kind of stuff. Um. I, and I, again, forgive me, I don't have it in front of me. I think last it, there, was, there was some line that was like, you know, we'll we'll, we'll put it in new. It, I, I forget exactly what it said, but there was one thing that it said was like uh, we'd advertise this in real estate agents that are you know, in East Hampton. Does that sound familiar? Do you know what I'm talking about? That was in the narrative. Correct. Yes. And um, the only comment I wanted to make on that is I'd love to see this advertised beyond East Hampton. Um, just to be able to, uh, you know, at, we live in one of the areas with the, you know, worst Latino white segregation in the country, like literally, you know, statistically, one of the lowest. And I think it's important to, like this program, in, in the narrative that you said, it talked about how this can be a program where people that are low income can 
buy a home and that that and they want to live in East Hampton because you know there's good schools and it's a nice community and that can really like this is really a program that can lift people up and I'd like to see that be used as a tool to, to cast a wide net and so I, I guess the only thing I'd note there just for the record is that I'd like to see this advertised beyond East Hampton in the greater area. And you're pretty much specific to the home buyer program when you To the home buyer program. Yeah, the housing rehab program is for people that already own homes right. here. So that, that's not that. But All right. I totally disagree. You can't even de-stamp the money for somebody else living somewhere else. Well, once they, 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 they move here, they live here. They, he's talking about people that would move in. Right. They move oh, here. Okay. So then they live here. In other words, attracting minority candidates, maybe, from other I mean, neighboring towns, it doesn't matter. Neighboring you know. towns. That's that's what I think he's trying to do to increase our diversity. I think that's what you're, yeah. you're talking about. I don't have a problem with that because they're going to move into the city. I mean, and there is criteria for the program. Maybe we should go over that a little bit for people who weren't here. What's the home buyer program specificity? Go over that again. How are they eligible? Is that all run through the Valley CDC again? Valley, not CD, Valley. Uh, we run by whoever responds to the RFP, right? So I don't, I just want oh, to Oh, you mean, all right, 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 right. Um, that, you know, this is, would be an open bidding process. So, um, so there's a, there's an income limit associated with the, with the uh, being eligible for the down payment assistance, I think, 80%. 80% of the area median income. Um, usually in these kinds of programs, people take a class. They take a first-time homebuyer class, which we talked about last time, which is usually a four-part series, right. teaching folks how to purchase a home for the first time. Um, and then there would be, um, usually there's an extensive amount of counseling that occurs with those home buyers that really are sort of ready to purchase <coughs> to help them get mortgages, to help them you know, along those, all, all along the way. So the admin costs kind of reflect that sort of staff time that, you know, staff at, at an agency may spend with people as they get ready to purchase a home. And then it would be a deferred payment loan. So um, there would be a restriction that, you know, as the longer as they live in the property for five years, um, it would be forgiven after five years, but if they moved within that five-year period, then of course you have to pay that. Right? I remember that, okay. So I guess, like, uh, the way it I might suggest is like um, in the bidding process that one of the requirements of, of people that respond to the RFP is that when they were to run the program that they would need to advertise this to, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the language would be, to like the, to the, greater, to the yeah, greater, to, greater, 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 Hamden, greater Pioneer Valley, Hamden, Hampshire, and Franklin County, or something yeah. like that, you know, if, if that we could put that it. in the worksheet. Right. Yep. That's okay. What is the 45 pr participants? You mean you're limiting the amount of people that can participate in the education? Again, this was um, taken from the program description that uh, Valley had prepared based on their experience um, in that time period, which is uh, 18 months for the program. Mm -hmm. um, that was approximately how many people had um, come to them for counseling and education, including things like doing credit repair, which can take some time, in addition to the things that Jana mentioned. Just so the education part isn't necessarily for just buyers, it's for That's people correct. that want, want to buy a home that That's might correct. not necessarily need the down payment, but it's education the first time home. Yes. Excellent. Lead testing, I love that. Okay. And the I, I, it seems like a low figure, lead testing at 2,500, for how many homes is that? Is that going to be the six well, it buyers? Would a, it would be a lead uh, a test. So those are usually what I have like 300, 300. Oh, okay. Million. Not the de leading, but the test to you. determine if the property has lead. Thank you. That makes sense. But how would that work if it did? Would that disqualify buyers that? It wouldn't. I, uh, there are some programs out there, some mortgage programs that, that do require lead testing. Um, I think that that's it's in there because it may come up people are supposed to purchase a home. Um, but this down payment assistance would not require letting. But, but if the but if it was a family that was well the lead test would only happen after they had already applied for the DP, like after they had already received assurance of the DPLs, is that correct? Well, the lead test part that happens as part of your home purchase. So as part of your inspection and your home purchase you're gonna do a, a, a lead test. 
Typically, you don't. Typically. If it's required yeah. by the bank, is what they're saying. Or if there are kids under the age of six that are currently living in the house, then, then there will be a, a license So what I'm saying, would in the structure of how this would work, if family re receives assurance of, of the DPL, and then they have their they're, they make an offer on a home. There's a lead test. If they have kid, they have children under six. There's a lead test. It was previously listed as unknown. Now it's certified that there's lead there. Now that would need to be deleted. If, and if they continue to, to want to purchase that home, they could also walk away mm -hmm. and find a different house. Which, right? I mean, mm -hmm. true. Although. So would, I guess what I'm what I wouldn't want to have happen there is that family lose that loan, and yeah. that that would be my fear, is that I mean because the housing stock here, most houses have lead. I mean it's the truth, right? Most are listed as unknown, but most have lead. So I just want to see. I, I'm just curious, like how it would play out for people that have kids. I think um, that's that's probably the best that you're, you're determined income eligible for the loan, but you don't actually get a commitment of the loan until after, you, after you've identified a house, gotten the mortgage, completed the mortgage application, and, you're, and all the pieces can be put together. And then, the, so the, the, the lead test is part of putting the pieces together. But it's not like you're approved for the DPL and then the rest of the process is separate from that. It's, it all works together. So it's like pre-approval on a mortgage loan. You get pre-approved, but the money doesn't come through until closing. So you get pre-approved for this loan, and then you know they go through yeah. inspection and okay. lead tests and stuff like that, and then they can get the money at closing. Has yeah. it been There's historic been problems where lead has come up during this program in the past? Where I'm not aware of it. Yeah. Also keep in mind that the population that's going to be able to access this has to fit sort of the sweet spot in terms of being income eligible and also having good credit and being credit worthy. And it's 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 a pretty distinct population that can kind of fit both of those two data points to have that good credit and to and to be low on. And somehow they've connected with housing exactly. authority, you exactly. know, Valley CDC or something like that. So that's even narrower. Exactly. Sorry to press this point. Are, are the are the DPLs, is the lead testing a requirement of of receiving those? Like I'm just, I'm curious just how that money, like when that would actually come up in the process that there would be money spent for the lead testing. Like I'm, I still haven't sort of understood, you know what I mean? Like where that would fit that we would spend this money on a lead test. Um, I feel like we should just take it out. Uh, so I mean, I think that um, my inclination is that this would be a, the lead test. The money for lead testing would be available to families who can't afford the lead test. So you know, there's lots of costs that families put out of pocket when you go to buy a house. Anybody who bought a house knows this. You know, you pay for the home inspector. Sometimes the home inspector and the lead inspector are not the same person. So I think my inclination is that it's not a condition of the DPL, it's not a condition of CPA funds that properties be deleted. <clears throat> so we can't make it a condition of getting the down payment assistance. Um, I think that if a family presented that they could not afford the lead, the house seemed like it probably needed a lead test, they couldn't afford the lead test, that's when the, the program would offer to pay for the lead test on behalf of the family. Okay. But my inclination is also that then if the house needed to be deleted or needed to be abated that then the program would help connect that family to the resources that would be able to do that work because we talked about this last time that deletting is really expensive right. and there's not a lot of programs out there that you can access so there would be I think yeah. that some sort of connection to and then like Jessica said they could decide to move on to another property yeah. um, all right that's all yeah Thank I, you. I think I think it's an extraordinary expense in home buying to have to do a lead <clears throat> test as yeah. opposed to just a an inspection which right. is normal so if that ends up being something that hurts the home buyer when we're trying to help them then i think it's worthy to be in there so basically it would happen around the same time as the inspection anyway. 
Yeah. Well, the inspector would say we need a lead test of the bank, or because of the six and under, is that right. a rule well, too? There's so? a lot of different. I mean, lead lead rags are really complicated, super complicated, and it, sometimes it has nothing to do with whether there's children or not. There could be other triggers that would require. A okay. So based on this discussion, I think we're at the point of asking that a worksheet be drawn up. And sorry, I have one question before we do that. Another. I'm sorry. The last thing. On the on the last time we talked, uh -huh. the, uh, and it's in the minutes here, um, we talked about uh, getting private money to um, leverage leverage matching sorry. money from, from the real estate agents, from lawyers, you know, the people that are participating in this, to be able to potentially direct more money toward uh, things like the DPLs. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if there was any work on that. So, um, Thank you, I, Scott. So glad you reminded us of the leverage question. Um, so I think that there, I mean, pro agencies like Valley CDC or HAP, I mean, I did a little research of like what other Program, down payment assistance programs there are, you know, that have been funded through CPA. Um, HAP has a program in Belchertown that they used, have been using CPA funds for. Um, you know, they do quite a bit of leveraging anyway for their first time home buyer classes. So um, I think we talked about this last time that they're frequently sponsored by a local lender. So East Hampton Savings Bank may, you know, give $2,500 to help run a class. Um, so that's the kind of leveraging that we anticipate that they would do. Um, I'm a little hesitant to require any additional, you know, grant money or things like that because those can just be really hard to come by. Also, I mean, nonprofits generally um, have other funding sources. So, you know, I work at a nonprofit. When we fill out budgets for grants that we're applying for, the other money that we're leveraging is the other money that we have to run our programs. So, you know, typically, and we can ask for that in the budget. If, if, you know, when people respond to the RFP, you know, to show what their leveraging funds are. So their project costs may be a lot higher than this, but so they're using some of their own funny money, United Way funds, or you know, East Hampton Savings Bank, and then they're using our this program to kind of make the program work. So that's sort of how we envision it would happen. Um, that's that that yeah, I mean. Yeah. And just to be clear, I say this as a fan of the program. I'm not. I'm not trying to come off as antagonistic at all. It's more like, you know, like we talked about last time. It seems like there's there's private incentive to be able to be affiliated with these programs, and so maybe that can be part of the worksheet as well to like in, in the RFP cross process mm -hmm. to to say to, to essentially have that be as far as being selected that we the. The ability to go into the community and seek out private money to offset this is something that we really value in the selection of who would do the RFP. Just because, like, they, I mean, I've, I've gone to one of these programs and they, you know, we used the lawyer that came to this. Like, it was well worth her. She was great and she did it, you know, not for her, but like, it, it's it's advertising. And I think it's really, if we can we can leverage that to be able to have more money to put the things that. There is no private incentive. Okay. So there's a requirement that forces them to do something. That can't so do. the worksheet will include that. Saying that. I'm sorry. Say that again. Say that again, Jay. Well, just if it's a recommendation, but it doesn't force them to get grants or get money to do those. I'm not really talking about grants. I'm well, talking about like, how, you know, how's the money come? From I mean, they, they have a lawyer present, they have a bank present. They have but those things are probably inspector. going to naturally happen in the process. But 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 to have them sponsor it, where if they're presenting, they could they the presenters could also be like paying money to sponsor the program. It's worth it's being in these programs is worthwhile for them. Mm -hmm. It's in and kind so, uh, assistance. And, in ki and like usually they do it in kind. I'm saying I think we can leverage it where they can sponsor this program, get their name attached to the program. And, and be able to be in the program, and then that could offset some of the public money that we're spending. But how do you write it up so you're, you're not forcing them to do well, it? Well, what I what I do in this case is suggest we put it in the worksheet that we're we're asking. And in this, can I just clarify? Yeah. What's the worksheet that you keep talking about? Oh, you it's a, it's Mimeo. You get it for after recess, and you <laughs> do the next day. <laughs> you keep saying worksheet. We have established right. a worksheet for every contract, or we'll call it a contract 
for all applications. Oh, We've okay. so established that. It gives specificity. Show, show her one. Okay. Specificity. You need to give your boss. Are you your boss? Who's your boss? You I should am. give her some information. <laughs> Managing up. Okay. Well, it's a conditions right. listing, you know. Okay. They're the kinds of things when we give the, that, that we attach to it. I just did a letter for the housing. They got their fire suppressors and they got worksheets. So, so I just our worksheets. Sure totally. Talking about like the RFP. No. Paperwork. That's why I just wanted to. Be right. It's a good sure. question. Okay. But it would go. I mean, but it would sort of direct the RFP to have that language sure. essentially as a as a contingency for the money. Yep. And it, I mean, you know, a tell me if you think that makes sense, and b tell me if you think that's the way to do it. I mean, like again, my goal here is to have more money. You know, if there's private money that can fund part of this, to be able to have more public money to help fewer people. So That's my goal. My question is, what if we can't get that? What if we can't leverage that private money? I won't exclude the program if we can't get the money. That's are we all. done? No. So what it, I mean, in the worksheet, I guess the way it would, I mean, you're selecting a vendor, right? right? So you're saying, as part of the selection process, the vendor that you select, that's one of the criteria that you would highly value is being able to go into the, you know what I mean? And then, I mean, and then it would be up to you to actually value that. And, you know, I hope you would, because I do think it it's a way to have more money, go to some of these things that, the market isn't going to support. So a suggestion, not necessarily a requirement okay. or a condition of. Yeah, it don't want to be a condition where it makes the program not happen. No, no I, not, I, I agree. Just a suggestion, I think that's good because as you put up, it makes the project valuable. They're more valuable as a contractor, whatever we're calling them, to if they show that they have in kind or other grants or other programs that this money will can match up with. Match up with. I don't know how you'd write that in the RFP, but I think that's, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Okay. So in the worksheet, we're going to put the budget conditions that we talked about. What else? I think that's about it, right? I've got nothing more. <laughs> oh, the Greg does. At, at risk of <laughs> laboring on, I, um, can I ask who's the legal party to these loans? For what, the housing rehab or the? For the first time home buyer program. Who contractually owns the, or is loaning the money? Is it the city? Um, that's a good question. Um, we'd have to probably figure that out with the vendor, because we would have a contract with the vendor. I think that. How did it happen the last time? Or you didn't do the we loan program? We haven't done it before. All right. It may end up, it might be once they get selected, maybe the city is the one that releases. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm well, the sure. city eventually has to release the they funds. They would, but the question is, do we release it as a lump sum to the vendor and then have the vendor sort of disperse the money, or does, or does once it's selected, it has to come back to the city? I thought it would be also reimbursement. The debt's going to the city, right? I mean, as it's paid back, the money goes to the city coffers, correct? If, if they leave their house, if they stay in their house for five years. Then right, but if they left their house, then the money would go back into city coffers. Correct. Then the city yeah. would have to be the lender, and, and the vendor could be like a servicer. Right. But I mean, yeah, unless, I mean, I, th I think. Unless it's best from the vendor. Right. I think you need to get. You might need to get some question. legal questions. That's a financial director question, I think, on how yeah, right, procurement would want it. So we'll, we'll run it the way the procurement wants it done. That's always for me. So I guess, you know, <laughs> this was a question I had earlier, I think, when this first time home buyer program came about a year ago. But from a legal and administrative standpoint for these loans, are there resources? Is that what's included in admin and overhead? I mean, wh wh where, as far as administering, if, if it is the city, and I'm just saying if it is the city, do we have the resources here at the city to administer these no loans and stay on top of them? There is a legal piece of this. I don't see anything here that's, you know, legal. But I think that there probably would be a cost. I think that has to be. My feeling is it has to be worked out, and we have a vendor administering the program. So the relationship between the vendor and the city, I think the finance director can answer that question. And we're not necessarily approving this tonight. We're getting a worksheet, and we're going to probably vote on it next meeting. So I think, uh, Jess, we should get. Uh, Melissa's opinion on this, how the vendor vendor city arrangement would work in administering the loans. I think that's a good question. And I say this because, in my opinion, we're going to do a worksheet up and vote on this at the next meeting, which is in August, and then it'll go before the city council in September 
or the Finance Committee in September. Well, it'll be approved the second meeting in September if it's approved. Should be. I mean, if the committee wants to approve it. We're not going to vote on it tonight. We're going to write all this up, get this question answered, and um, do a worksheet, which you guys will look at prior to the meeting, and everybody will get it to make sure it's what we all want in the meeting. And guys, if I don't think it breaks any rules. If, if there's something you brought up that might want to be a condition in the worksheet, just let Jamie know we did talk about this and if there's something in the worksheet you need. So we're not going back and forth. We only meet once a month. Right. Okay. Any other things on this? I'd like to move on to another applicant. <laughs> so next meeting, we'll finalize this. Answer that question on the vendor versus city loan program. How <laughs> um, and maybe he can come up with some language. I'd love to see the language you might include in the RFP just as a draft of what, how you would approach a vendor for the leveraging kind of thing, what language that might be. Okay. You gotta come up with it sometime, so it might be good for the committee to see it, so. That's my request, is the committee okay with that request? Okay. Yeah. the only one here. <laughs> Anything else the committee wants them to bring back to us besides when we get the worksheet we'll detail it? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll Thank vote you. on it next meeting. What's the funding cycle, Jamie? Are we supposed to fund this on August? Yeah. It's a lot. August would be the plan. All right. So well, that's good. The next thing we have is a, I'm going to jump to the ketchup. All right, ketchup. What do I do with my. I am going to jump to the. Because this should be short. The Housing Authority's request for reasonable combination improvements. We got a new budget. I can find it. Uh, yeah. Did you see Debbie, right? Yes. Did you see the project funding worksheet, East End Community Preservation Act Committee? Yes. You saw that? Um, you have yes. it, yes, yes. You have I it in your hand. Okay. Yeah, I, I have it on the computer. Everybody's got this yep. in front of them? Yeah. I, I see nothing in there that's of any concern. Does anybody have any concerns on it? Okay. Um, if there's no discussion, then a motion to approve the funding of the CPA uh, fund. One question, if you would. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, going back to my, my concern with the other project, are these properties uh, acquired or created with, with CPA funds? Properties no, that are subject to these rents? Okay. Yep. Actually, just I have one question. The scope, it says purchase and installation of accessible ramps. Was, did you want, wasn't there things beyond ramps? Wasn't there, what, or was this just money? It was mainly ramps. We, we have done some walk-in showers in there. Right, I remember you saying that. But this was mainly the ramps that is, seems to be the ongoing thing, and I see that more happening than the other items. But do you, I mean. When I, I, kind of, I went back and looked at their application, and it said in their application that this request was only for ramps. Yeah. Which okay. is why, which is why it says only for ramps. Okay. But but if we wanted to change that and make it more wide, then this would be the time to do that, I guess. I mean, that would be the only thing. I mean, just because I remember you mentioning that, yeah. and I just wouldn't. I mean, if you because if you get three requests for walk-in showers, then you can't use this money. And like we, you know, like that'd be the only thing I would say that maybe you want to. I don't think it's gonna. Like, if, if we could, like, to broaden the scope, what number is it? I'd still be doing a reasonable accommodation. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing to walk in shower. Right. We don't just put one in because they want one. If they have to right. go through the same process as they do with a, a ramp. And it's still American with this. I mean, it's the exact, it's, but it, that was the only other thing I think you mentioned, right? I mean, that, so. Just in the scope. That would be the only. I just don't want you to get stuck. You know what I mean? Do we want to uh, amend the scope to include. Do we want to amend the scope at all, guys, or do we want to stay specific? Regional accommodations. It just to, I mean, that would, that's okay. the only other thing, right? I think access, accessible ramps and walk reach hours. Or regional accommodation. If she has a wider range to do what she wants. Any other reasonable accommodation request? Any other after Disabilities Act? American Disabilities, to comply with American Disabilities Act, 
No, I see what you're doing. All right, accessory ramps and. Or any reasonable accommodation. Right, I think that's. I like that yeah. because. Yeah. Or any other reasonable accommodation. It's the same it, amount of money regardless. Mm -hmm. that we're not, right, I'm not, yeah, I'm not looking to change it. I just don't, you know. Why don't we add that language? It'll be part of the uh, minutes. We can still vote on this and yeah. it'll be added to your letter like you got tonight. Or another right. letter, yes. okay, for the, uh, okay. Anything else? That's very good. So we're saying purchase and installation of accessible ramps or any other reasonable accommodation to comply with the American with Disabilities Act. Mm -hmm. Reasonable accommodation. I think I think the words reasonable accommodation requests are part of the ADA yeah. language, so we have to keep that. So it's kind of redundant you say it twice, but. Thank you. No problem. Anything else? Members? <laughs> um, what's a discussion item in the minutes? Uh, yeah, about uh, use of the CP funding to um, replace operational funds. That we can't replace. You can't use CPA funds to replace operational funds. Um, and there was a question as to whether or not this was going to be funding. I remember that uh, operational funds. Um, and when I, my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, that this wouldn't be replacing operational funds, it's actually just expanding the amount of funding that you have. Right mm -hmm. now, when you get those accommodation requests, it's actually taking away from other services that you mm -hmm. provide. Mm -hmm. So this is, it's not, your budget isn't staying the same, your budget is increasing by this $40,000. And it's a reimbursement, again. So. We're not going to reimburse you for paper clips. We're going to reimburse you for ramps. Yeah. Well, Just remember that in case you need a lot of paper clips. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would do the whole process of the request for it, mm -hmm. and then three bids on it, and then once we completed the work, then I would submit. That's, I think, what it says in here. I'll just submit the whole package that it's completed with pictures and everything, and then reimburse Each ramp three, as you do it, not like within mm -hmm. 30 days. Well, Payment? Whatever the procurement officer, okay, Melissa asked. Yeah. I think well, that's I mean, that might typical city spending. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's. Of okay. course. Of course. They do. It, it's going to be with all the additional layers that it's going through, it's they probably may have to unrealistic. Well, if you're going to, if we're going to reimburse, aren't you paying them and then we're reimbursing oh. you? Oh, if you wanted, yeah, if you wanted that's to. That's what this way. program okay. is. It's yeah, not what I want, it's what okay. it is. Okay. That's the easiest way to do it. So because you then then so that your, your contractors aren't waiting. Right, okay. so then they're going to get paid. You're the ones are going to be waiting, so get the paperwork okay, in. That's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Anything else, committee? I'll take a motion to approve. I make a motion. Second. I'll second. Okay, we're going to approve the Housing Authority properties request. Wait, are we funding this, or what are we doing right now? We're funding it. We're funding it. Is this a, this is a month month to month. make an exception in this case. Oh, okay, okay. I'm just getting caught up. All right. Yeah, oh, sorry, you weren't here. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I find the fact that the, I have to admit, given the way the city works already, that the three-month quarterly cycle that this committee's on is concerning to me, but I will follow it as long as you want. I'm, no, I'm fine with it. I just didn't know. I but I, I just wanted to put that out there. That's um, what we're, that's it what has we're to go through the city council. Decision. It still has to have a finance committee review. There's so many layers of review already. So. Okay. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposition or abstentions? I'm going to vote no on this one. What did you say? I'm going to vote no on this one. Okay. You don't want to explain the no for no, it's, uh, I'm still hung up on the uh, the DOR guidance here. Okay. You know the, the DOR guidance I'm looking at here. You know talks about rehabilitation, restoration of housing, and that includes quote improvements to comply with federal, state, and local access codes. We'll include your statement in the minutes. I still Not feel that the legislation is keeps me feeling good about oh, yeah. it. I, okay. I think there's room but to I think that's here. I'm just noting my objection. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the vote was eight to one in favor. So you're done. Next meeting. Okay, thank we you will, very we much. will, I will sign a letter and mail it. Well, it's got to go before the city council. So next city council meeting, it'll be brought to our attention and go to the finance committee. 
So first meeting in September, I'll put a, uh, a what do you call it? A, a uh, oh my God, a uh, public hearing for it. Okay. So if we get it, we should get it by the August meeting, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to ask the mayor. You're going to put this forward. I'll do my best to get this. Uh, Sure. Move to the mayor next week, and then yeah, that's still plenty of time. Enough time to get it to the council for August, then it'll be there for August. Try to do it before Thursday because of this next week, the end of the month. Yeah, okay. All right, next topic. Thank, Thank you for you your patience. Much. You're welcome. The Brickyard Conservation Area, are you here to talk to us again? <coughs> and I think we've got a new budget request. I'm just going to amend it because I want to make sure I've got the right thing. This is a native plant butterfly garden request. And, and right, and the Great Yard Road Trail extension from the okay. Festival Trail and improving the East Green Street entrance. Mm -hmm. And you've submitted a budget of total of 20800 That's correct. And with a change in the, uh, and actually maybe a little bit less than that, because I just as I was sitting here, I got a little clarification on the delivery charge for the stone. Which the gardens are underway and more than half built now. Um, but we we had to reconstruct a culvert crossing going into the East Green uh, Street entrance. That was the first thing we had to do in this project a couple years ago, and. Um, the stone delivery was like a total of 45,000 pounds, and nobody could tell me if the weight capacity would be sufficient for that culvert. And given we spent 35 on it, I didn't want to play games and see it in the cold. So we split it into two deliveries, and it's 225 more than it was originally, but the cost of the materials was less than I estimated on here. So instead of the uh, $2,500 for materials, that cost is $2,125. So look at all the money I'm saving. Do <laughs> you want to adjust the budget or leave it there because this again is a reimbursement for program? You. What, if, if it means coming back again versus not, then... Uh, it's a <laughs> it's a, you know, it's you know, a reimbursement just, just program. Leave it, it is. Leave yeah, it like it is. Um, you're yeah. you're going to spend the money and if you don't spend it all, it stays in our account. So it's yes. not like we're losing it. Yes. Okay? Yes. Because you have to submit for reimbursement of work done, and you know what the figure is going to be then. That's right. And I understand that these are pretty accurate, but still estimates. Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't have the invoice in hand. Right. And to be clear, they're not grantees are not constrained line by line. This is a budget. We give them a total amount things go over a little bit for one line item and under for another. Well, if they decide to do something that's not listed here, like there was something you said that they shouldn't do. The art. Huh? The art. The art you wanted to do, which would not be within the scope of this. Right. If they added something and then try to get reimbursed for it, that's why we have Jamie to tell us that that's not possible. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying, like, what we... We don't restrict line by line. This is a grant, this is a long grant. Right. If one part is higher and another part is lower, yep. that's okay. So it's, you know, for, you to, for you to manage the total. It's going to be really close to the number <coughs> put into the budget. But you don't have to come back to us, is what he's saying. I think it's a good point. You know, it's one item that you like the trail extension, you have 7800 That's suddenly 8000 And you know that you can get the money by reducing the budget for the trailside butterfly garden by $200. Mm -hmm. You don't need to ask us. Okay. It's the bottom line, and you're not spending it on something new. It's right. part of the project that you've submitted. Right. That's important. And that'll be in the conditions and part of the agreement when we do it. And, and so as long as it comes in 28, uh, 2,800 or less, then that's fine. Right. Yep. Okay. And as a condition. <coughs> We still put the conditions in when the work is completed, that kind of stuff. That's part of the worksheet. We didn't do that. Um, so the housing authority requires freshness. It, it, it had that. Okay, I don't know if you did it with the, well, we, well, when we do this, we're going to do it, right? With um, the one that we just quoted on, there was. We will do that. Because um, we didn't do the worksheet. The 
for the reasonable accommodations. It's oh, August it's, 31st, it's 2018. Right, it's in there. Um, this one, because it's additional funding to a grant that was already approved by CPA, um, there's actually a 12-page grant agreement between the city and the Pest Comic Conservation Trust um, that was um, agreed to by both groups um, after the last funding. So, in my opinion, that's this is just providing more funding for that project. So and the de really deadline date or whatever date we put in is not extended. Well, that's why it says what it says to okay. extend. To extend. Okay. That's how I understood that. All right. Good. Okay. The February date. That you yes. <clears throat> so we're going to do another worksheet of conditions based on this, correct? This is what they have. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to look in. Uh, PCT funding worksheet. Okay. So we have this. Yes, I'm sorry. Total matching fund 67000 Yes, supersedes the case of any conflicts. Okay. Everybody reading the uh, worksheet, any problems? I'm sure. I see nothing. Looks good. Okay. So we could approve this tonight as well. If the committee has no questions, I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the money for the Pascama Conservation Trust for the uh, Brickyard Brook uh, Butterfield extension. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous. Yes. So this will also go before the City Council. Jamie can get the work in to Barbara before next Thursday, <coughs> unfortunately. That's the deadline for her agenda. And it should go before the City Council, and then it goes to the Finance Committee. First meeting, I'll purposely put uh, public hearings for the first meeting in September. If we get these, that the yours and the housing authority just came through. All right. I just had one unrelated, well, related but not to this <coughs> question. Um, so we we had the original grant that we got for this project from CPA was for 185,000, and then we paid. I think a couple of uh, we've had a couple of invoices from the contractor that we paid, and I just got another one today. They're not done with the project. I think this is their last invoice to us. I, I'm not the treasurer, so I'm not keeping track of the numbers here, but um, I don't want to pay them until the job is finished. Right? It makes sense to me. Yeah, um, and so um, I'm wondering um, if there's a way, would I ask them to submit a lesser amount if they need to get paid before it's over and withhold I don't know amount. what your project, usually contractors write up a, an agreement yeah. with you. Mm -hmm. We need to read the agreement to see if it says funding will be finalized at the end, or whatever it says at the yeah, end. I, have to I can't believe you would agree to pay them before the work is no, done. No, I'm sure we didn't. So don't. I'm not asking you to pay it before they're done. <laughs> well, they, you seem to say that they're not done and they, they submitted a bill. Yeah, and I need to check with our treasurer to see if this is their final amount that covers what we agreed to pay them for the project, um, or whether it's a lesser amount. And I guess if, it, if it's a lesser amount, then we'll send it along. You guys are managing the project, not us. Yeah, and yeah. The procurement officer is going to ask the same questions as the project done. You know. Okay. There's often a percentage of the cost of the project that's held back until the final. So you can't approve. Yeah, until sure. completion. So, sure. okay. I recommend that. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. What I do with mine? Thanks. What's left is the pedestrian bridge. Is that, do we have anybody here for that? Well, are you guys here for? No, we're here. Just there <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I guess Fans. we're done. Uh, drinking water supply, yeah. protection, Cook Road, none of that. You have them on in the September. 
Huh? It'll be submitted in September. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Can I reset it procedurally? Is it is it possible? I'm just like I feel bad that we kept the people with the worksheets, which are really quick, like here through the whole thing. Can we make it where the worksheets go first? I will take that under advice because I recognize that I did that. Is it? Yeah, I, I didn't know how that got me. I didn't know that their discussions would be as fast as they were. All right. I, I just I, uh, you know I I didn't. So. Oh yeah. No. I'm, I just was thinking about. It. I mean, because often when we get to that point, we've already talked about it a couple times, and no, yeah. I don't know. Just throwing that out there. The agenda, I, I, the agenda can be done in any order. Yeah, it's up to me. It's, it's, it's just a. And what I'll make a. Um, I use Jesse all the time. I will ask Jesse what's fast and what's not. Jamie. Like, Jamie. Why am I saying. Oh, that's because she's sitting there. Okay. Like, <laughs> two of you have J's in your name. Uh, Jamie, I'll ask her next time to make sure that I know what's. Uh, needs a lot more discussion. Like the Housing Authority's bid. We've discussed a lot of it, so it right, may well, be a short one. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Think. Well, point well taken. I understand. <laughs> no, it's a good point. Anything else, guys? Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Hey, Jess, do you have a minute before you leave? Yes, yeah, I'm just going to move the chairs. Oh, I got that. I got that.